Hi everyone, it's Kelly. Um, I'm here to work on my mystery steampunk project again. I um, hope you all have been doing well. Um, thank you for every, to everybody for helping me get closer to my 500 subbies. Um, there is a video that I made on uh, what the prize winner is going to get. And if I get more than 30 people that comment or share or whatever, I'm going to do two giveaways. Um, I haven't checked today, but I'm still only in the one giveaway section. So if you guys want an, an extra chance to win something, please share, share, share. Thank you. Anyways, so have you seen the video where I made my steampunk hat? This is just craft foam. Craft foam. And it's part of my mystery steampunk project. That I still have yet to find anybody online. In Pinterest, Blogspot, LinkedIn, anywhere. That has done what I'm, what I'm going to try to do. Okay. So I've been doing the videos for each section of what I'm going to be doing. Um, one of my videos was doing ATCs. Now, what in the world would ATCs have to do with top hat? Well, that's a good question. You just have to wait and find out. But today, I'm going to attempt to make some goggles, steampunk style. And I'm hoping that I can do it justice. I've never done this before. Um, when I made the top hat, actually, I made it first before I did the video, just so I didn't look stupid. <laughs> well, um, I probably still looked silly when I was trying to recreate it, but um, I didn't do that with the goggles. So I'm here with y'all live and raw. So I bought these um, goggles at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. All right. And I took off the eye band or the headband that goes around it. Um, I was thinking I was going to use it, but I, I don't know. I was going to wrap it in electrical tape, that type of thing. But right now, um, and I shortened the cross nose piece. Can you see that? Um, I put it to its closest so that it will fit on the steampunk hat. Now, obviously, you know, I'm not done. This is just a starter of what I'm doing. But I saw some pretty neat, um, a pretty neat video on how to do it. And I'm going to use some of his ideas, which means, yes, I will link, um, I will link the video. I think his YouTube channel name is Lost Wax, L-O-S-T-W-A-X. Um, he does some incredible, uh, steampunk crafts. So if that gives you any idea and you want to check out more of Steampunk, he's got a really good channel and he's goofy. And I mean, <laughs> he took his wife's Pilates mat and made a Steampunk hat out of it. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I'm going to kind of wing it here and just see what we see. All right, now first things first, pushing off some of my Steampunk stuff aside. I want to do something about these goggles, and I'm not quite sure how to go about it. I like leaving the idea that the lenses are purple, okay? I'm not going to change that, but I think I am going to add something around them. I'm just not quite sure what. But give me just a second, I need to go get my water, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I know, that took so long, didn't it? Um, I'm not sure how this will work, but I'm going to attempt to paint just the outside edges and the white plastic. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, then I've always got electrical tape. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to have to get me some more black after that hat. But it's just apple barrel. It will show up. Anyways, jet black. You can get it at Walmart. 50 cents or something like that. So, let's see. I need to get the paper towels. See, aren't those pretty? I fold up paper towels and use them as my, you know, my wipe off or whatever for my paints or my shimmers and they end up coming out so pretty. Mm, I'll make this one right here. So, I don't know why that thing is flashing. I'm going to have to look at the manual, but we'll see. Alrighty. So, how was everybody's Easter weekend? Mine was pretty good. Um, we did an Easter special at my church. And my granddaughter was in the program, and she got to sing a special. I didn't even, I didn't even try to help her out this time, boy. She knocks it out of the park. I just helped her on backup chorus. But um, she sang, "How could you say no to this man?" Which is pretty cool. And she's eleven years old. And let me tell you what. That child's already got a set of pipes. And to top it off, bless her heart, she had bronchitis on Easter morning. So she wasn't even at her best. But, again, she knocked it out of the park. If I can figure out how to get it to my Facebook page, I'll probably post it there just so you guys can see. Um... Yeah, she's, she's an up-and-comer, guys. I cannot wait to see which way she goes in life. She's got so much talent. And there are a lot of girls out there that have talent. They just don't have anybody to help encourage them. I'll tell you what, though, as much as we practice, Dad doesn't ever want to hear that song again. And I don't blame him. But we had to practice so much because uh, Madison <laughs> had dropped her phone in a mud puddle, which made it utterly useless. And she couldn't practice while um, she was, you know, away. She doesn't live in the same state I do. Um, she lives over in Kentucky. And, uh... But... Um, she had her tablet, so she was able to practice just a little. So we kind of had a cram session on Saturday, the day before Easter. But then we couldn't overdo it because we didn't want to hurt her, her voice at all, especially since she was already sick. Poor girl, she probably hates uh, honey chamomile tea now. I made her drink quite a few cups of it to keep her throat soothed. I mean, I didn't force it down her throat, but... I made sure she stayed hydrated and that she uh, protected her her throat. She was on antibiotics and, you know, I didn't want to stress anything that was trying to heal there. So. Okay. I kind of like that. It's coming out pretty good. I had to move my whole setup. I was set up in the living room, but um, 
guess my dad got kind of tired of looking at the craft mess. Which is okay. I probably would have too. So it's taken me a couple days just to get my bedroom to a point where I can I can sleep in it as well as craft in it. So So yeah, this is it took me a little bit. But I kind of like it a little better because now I don't have to run back and forth from the living room to my bedroom where I was storing everything anyway. We've got, uh, we live in an apartment building and I swear these walls are paper thin. We have one neighbor. And bless her heart, she's a nice lady, but every time she gets on the phone, I can hear every single word she says. And sometimes she puts it on speakerphone. So I get to hear both sides of the conversation. Now, at 7 o'clock in the morning, when you're trying to sleep, it's a bit much. So for the first time in five years, I got cranky. Who, me? Yeah, me. <laughs> you guys know me, right? And those that don't, I hope you learn soon. Because I really like doing videos and I really hope you enjoy watching my videos. I hope you learn something that you can share with you know, others in our crafting community. But, yeah. Anyways, she was so loud. First, I just threw a tennis ball at the wall. I know, kind of childish, right? But I was really sick that weekend. And I could not sleep to save my life. And I was so, so so very tired and let's see I know I'm probably missing spots but how do those look to you guys so far they look kind of steampunky right you think maybe make sure I can paint some without my fingers being in the way Well, the tennis ball to the wall didn't work. So then I threw three tennis balls at the wall. Like, boom, boom, boom. That didn't work. So finally I got up and I beat on the wall. And I heard one thump come back. Like she was yelling back at me. And, uh, but she either took it in the other room or lowered her voice or something because I didn't hear her after that and I haven't heard her talk on the phone like before so maybe it was just something she didn't realize because I know I can be loud sometimes I walk heavy drives dad nuts I don't know why um, I don't try to walk heavy my grandson sounds like he stomps through the house like an elephant but he doesn't try to, it's just the way he walks. And some people are sensitive to that, I guess. And on me, I consciously try not to walk heavy, but I manage to do it anyway. Alrighty. Didn't rinse it enough. That's okay. I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute and I'm going to attempt mind you, since I don't have very much left, I'm going to attempt, oh, let me get a bigger one, to put this back in the container.
Now I don't know if we'll need it again, but I'd rather put it back in there and let it... Ah. <sighs> let it be safe. I got my baby wax. I can probably figure out a better way to do this. But right now, I just haven't gotten that far yet. I'm thinking maybe a coffee can with a slit in the top or something. I don't know. I know there are people on the internet, even Stacy over at Pink Poodles, Pink Poodle Craft has made a way to, she's shown how you can make your own baby wipes. And I've done that before. When my children were little, I used to make my own. <clears throat> but this one bag, there's only 240 sheets in it, but this one bag has lasted me so long. You know, I don't even go through that much because I recycle. I recycle everything, even my paper towels <laughs> that I use to wipe off my... And this will get recycled, even though it's all black right now and dotted. You know, wait till I add another color to that. Because a lot of times I'll use some, like if this is dried and I need another baby wipe, I'll grab this, get it wet, and then, you know, use it to wipe up or mop up or whatever. So it gives me a chance to... Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. Now, this is something I learned over at Lost Wax. Whoops, let's see. There we go. And I will set this up here to dry. Now, I don't remember if he did it the way I'm about to do it. But I'm about to do it that way. So, let's see if I can find my, pen, my, my hole puncher. Oh, don't kill me. Okay, one second. Oh my gosh, that took way longer than it should have. I think I'm sweating. Let me put my sand back up. Oops. Okay, sorry about that. No, when I was moving everything back from the one spot to this spot, um, I was organizing and putting away things as I went. Well, I just spent the last 30 minutes looking for my hole punch. And it was exactly where it was supposed to be. But there was a reason for it. <laughs> I was about ready to give up and I sat back down and I looked over at my drawer and I went, oh. I bet that's where it is. And I pulled it open and sure enough, this is, I mean, I was empty in boxes left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some rivets. Come on. There you go. And I know that's going to sound a little funny, but... This is what I saw that one guy do, and it looks so, well, not really rivets. They're going to be screws. Well, they're going to look like screws. I have screws, but why waste, you know, why add all that extra weight when you really don't need it? All right. So, I'm going to punch out several. And this guy, I, I wish I remember his name. I hate calling him this guy. I think that is so rude. I should have at least attempted to remember what his name was. <sighs> ha! I should probably turn the fan because this is really thin craft foam and it's probably blowing my screw heads all over the place. But, that should be it for now, I think. Uh, 
All right, and these are not going to be black. Actually, I'm thinking about going like a gunmetal gray. I think that would work really nicely. And yes, I do have my ha my heat gun going. I may not need it, but then again, I might. So, I don't think that's going to be enough. No, I do not. This is why I kept all my scraps when I was making the hat. Because I had every intention on... Um, I mean... Here's my scraps from when I was making the hat. All of this. So, like I said, I recycle as much as I possibly can. <clears throat> and all of that would have gone to waste and I would have had to, you know, I don't know. Anyways. Ugh. Now, I really forgot what we were talking about before I got lost on my pursuit of my hole puncher. I think this one's almost ready to go to the hole punch rainbow bridge in the sky. That's where my circle punch went last year. I still haven't gotten a replacement for that one. But, you know, when you want a one inch or a two inch... The cheapest I found them is $13.50 for a two inch circle punch. I'm like, uh, I'll dig out my, my Sizzix or my, my die cut machine and I'll just make a bunch of circles that way. Oh well, I'll put that over there. I still do not think that's going to be enough, but we'll start with that. We'll set these aside. And... Let me see. There we go. Gunmetal gray. It's a metallic. I don't know if you can see that because this is not focusing very well right now. Maybe it's the glare. Anyway, I got it at Hobby Lobby when they had their 50% off sale for, you know, craft paints. So now, oh, I don't want to use that. Okay. I'm going to use the scrap thing that I've been using the entire time for all my steampunk stuff. So I push this aside and I'll put all of these on here. And let's see what we can see, right? Oh, I didn't want that one. That was the one I used to clean them black paint up. That's way too big. Whoops. Isn't that the coolest butterfly? That steampunk butterfly? One of my friends sent me that. And it's in a happy mail that I was so very grateful for. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wait. I know what I need to do first. This was what kind of tripped me out about it. He took his craft knife, right? And on every one, please be very, very careful when you do this. On every one, he just drew a line. Okay? Now this is really thin craft foam, so I have to be really careful. I don't cut it in half. Now you may not be able to see the line, but there is a line. I figured I'd do it before I painted, that way it could all be the same color. Um, and it looks like the head of a, a straight tip screwdriver, not a Phillips, which is the cross.
Uh oh. Huh. Wonder how that happened. Hmm. I lost where I was. Dagnabbit. Okay, I think it's that one. If not, I'm going to have a funny looking screw. Oh, that's what she said. Ha uh ha -huh ha. -huh. And I already did that one. Oh well. And I really hope this works because he was. He was using, like I said, he was using uh, a lot thicker foam than I am. But when I was ordering it, I wasn't thinking uh, thickness. I was just thinking, ooh, I found some craft foam and it's at a relatively good price. Well, next time I know better to look. I probably already did that one, but that's okay. And if I missed one, well, I missed one. Looks like I did. Okay. And here comes the phone. And yeah, I'll probably have to do the back because Or at least the signs. Or do a double coat because the gun metal is not thick enough. But I wanted to show you what I meant when I said it looks like a screw down. And I'll have to trim that little piece off. Let's see. Can you see that? Doesn't that look like a screw head? Isn't that so cool? So I will set that one aside and I will work on painting the others. Now I just thought that was a really cool idea and like I said it's a lot better than you know trying to cut the heads off of screws or, or whatever you know that people do to make their steampunk this is just a craft. It's not like I'm going to a steampunk renaissance fair or anything like that. This is just a craft. It started out as kind of like a what if. You know, my dad helped me um, with the original idea. Um, and the only other person I've talked to about this, she has been invaluable a uh, resource and help and a support. And... I don't know what I would do without her. Angela Rossetti. You know who I'm talking about, Chica. You know it's you. No, I am not Hispanic. I'm Irish, actually. But I grew up in a very diverse area. And I've lived all over. Um... Those that know me know I grew up in Detroit, and I'm very proud of that fact, even though Detroit's gotten a bad rep now, and that's because it needs it. Uh, Mayor Coleman Young, and whoever's watching this, it is a Coleman Youngy, whatever, when he died, he took Detroit right down in the toilet with him. And... I know one of our Pistons, Dave Bing, he tried to help. Kwame Kilpatrick, the guy right after that, boy, he got, ooh, he got into some big trouble. Detroit's been in need of some really good guidance and some really good prayers. Because it did, it used to hold probably 1.2 million people, just the city of Detroit. And if it's got 500,000 now, I'll be really, really surprised. Now, there's a lot of suburbs outside of Detroit, like Hazel Park, Ferndale, Warren, Royal Oak, Oak Park, Monroe, Taylor, you know, things like that. Those are on the West End. Um, Dearborn. I mean... But I don't know, it's it's like 
and some of you may be from Detroit and get really upset at what I say, but I'm sorry, Coleman Young was the worst thing that could have happened to Detroit. He was as crooked as the day is long. And I'll tell you. But, okay, religion politics. That's something we don't talk about. I'm not supposed to. I'm sorry, I just, you know, I see, I see words from different cultures sometimes because, you know, I lived there and lived that life for a while. Like when I say chica, okay, that's female for girlfriend, girl, you know, lady. Um, and I use that very affectionately with my close friends. But I also grew, um, I spent many years in Albuquerque and has a very high Hispanic population. Um, I don't know, I just, now I don't get into the cussing and the, you know, all of that, because that's just, I don't cuss, well, I can't say I don't cuss because I do slip used to be the F word was a word that came out of my mouth almost every other day or every other word and I'm so glad I'm out of that phrase and I still I don't say that one but I was whew, I was a bad girl on New Year's Eve I'll tell you that I hadn't drank anything or hadn't had anything to drink or gone out and partied or anything like that and uh, went to a New Year's Eve extravaganza and all my good girl went right out the window but that's okay I'm a good girl but a don't mess with me kind of girl seen too much been too many places, gone through too much hell. And I just, I don't put up with it anymore. I'm not, oops, no, that's funny. That thing just keeps flipping right over, doesn't it? <laughs> I wonder why that is. That's hilarious. I guess the foam and the paint don't want to let go of the paintbrush. And I figured there'll have to be a second coat because I can see yellow coming through on some of it. But yeah, when I saw that, I thought, how creative. That was such a great idea. Oh, well, okay, fine. I'll just do this side too. Just want to keep flipping over. There you go. How creative. And then, of course, when you paint it, it looks like a real screw. If you paint it correctly, because me, it looks like I'm missing the side, so I'm going to have a half silver, half, half yellow screw here. Let go. There. My one fingernail holding it down looks like I have a gray tip. They kind of look cool. Ooh, that does look cool. I wonder if I could do that to all my tips. Eh, probably not. But it was a thought. Now, you think that's crazy? That's what do you think they use when they do nail art? They use acrylic paint and they just call it nail art so they can charge more. Because whatever they do use, they're going to cover it over with clear coat anyways just to seal it and protect it. So yes, they use acrylic paint. 
to paint on acrylic nails. Go figure. There. Okay, I don't think I missed any. And I know I missed the sides on some, so we'll let those dry for just a minute. See, now my baby wipe is dry. So I'll just tuck it in there in my water thing, give it a little bit of a squeeze. Since apparently we're stuck on the gray and the black, that's what this one will be. It's gray and black. I'm just washing my hands off, wiping my hands, letting those dry a minute. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to do a second coat, let them dry, and then I'll come back. That way you guys don't have to sit here and wait. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and painted the, the screw heads um, a second time, and I picked them up and made sure that the sides were done. And then I gave the goggles some touch-up and a couple places where the paint kind of, you can see through it. So I did that, and it's all dry for the most part. Now, and the excess paint I used to just grunge up some die cuts that, that I had been given. So now, whoops, that's still a little wet, but that's okay. It's not wet where I need it to be wet, so or where I don't want it to be wet. So I'm going to take my glue gun. Huh, that one just came right off. Alright. Put a little bit right there. Come on, just a little. There we go. And slide it right there so it'll stay. Okay, so I'm going to pick these up because I don't fancy getting burned. Make sure I've got one in my tweezers before I start gluing. And then I'm going to put a dot of glue like right there. Just a small dot. Ah, I'll clean all the Loose strings up later. And then I'll push that down. And I'm going to go around the entire set of goggles this way. And I didn't count. Uh oh. I probably have to touch up because the glue and the paint are coming off too. See, so I'm learning at the same time you're watching me make big mistakes. So, uh -oh. you know, after I get these put on, then I'll have to go back and touch up with the gunmetal paint since it looks like the glue is making the paint come off. So. If I don't want that to happen, I may just have to end up getting my fingers icky. Which is fine. I have to, I have to. It's all in the, in the name of the crafts, right? Where'd my scissors go? Little pieces of plastic that don't belong. Yeah, I'll have to touch those up. Okay, well, don't use tweezers if you're using craft foam. I guess it just it comes right off the, the paint comes right off. I guess I could have sealed them first. But like I said, this is my first time doing anything like this. I'm still at the point right now where I'm hoping I have enough to go around the entire set of goggles. There we go. 
And I'll, like I said, I'll clean up all the little blue strings later. Now there are a few YouTubers that are really, really good at what they do. And these are some of my favorites. I just want to let you know. Um, one is uh, Pink Poodle Crafts, Stacy. She's been like my mentor. She doesn't know it, but and I don't even know if she watches my videos, to be honest. She's commented on a couple, so that's not that bad. But, I mean, that's cool. But she's pretty much taught me to reach outside the box, you know? That it, you don't have to just work in paper crafts. Like, because when I first started, that's all I was doing was paper crafts. And I was not happy. I wasn't. I... I never felt it was good enough. I never, I mean, then, you know, and then I'd think, oh, I did a really good job, and I'd watch a YouTube video, and someone else had done, had done something, and it was just phenomenal, and I'm like, there's no way I can compete. I can't compare. You know, there's so much more out there that, you know, so many other people are doing this. I mean, I'm just, it was like I was last week's trash. That's how I felt. So then I stopped crafting for a while. And then the next YouTuber I started watching was Lee over at Victorian Victorian Dreams and Glue Gun Chronicles. I think Victoria Victorian Dreams is her is her uh, YouTube name and Glue Gun Chronicles is her Facebook group. I could be wrong. But, um, she was the next one, and so I started, and she works a lot of shabby chic. She did challenges and things like that, and she still does them. Um, but I found, um, I'm not that big into shabby chic. I'm more of a rustic. I grew up in the Motor City, come on, you know? I'm not, and I grew up as, and you know, with my dad. So I didn't have the pink and the lace and the frills and all of that. I just, I grew up tomboy. I don't think I ever owned anything pink. And I just did that wrong. Watch me mess it up. I didn't own anything pink until I gave my daughter $20 to run up to Walmart and buy me one of those $20 canvas toolbox kits. And the little snot brought me back a pink and brown one. I was like, really? You couldn't have, you couldn't have grabbed me the blue one or the green one? She says, no, I thought pink was good. I said, that's because you're a girly girl and mom is not a girly girl. So, let me see if I can... Uh... I don't see it offhand. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is the hammer that came with it. Now, that's not that pink. But when you pull out a pink screwdriver and a pink um, pair of pliers and a pink, and then it all goes together, um, it's pretty pink. And that was about, oh, maybe seven or eight years ago she did that. And, uh, and then my dad and I were in this, uh, consignment shop. We were looking, I don't even remember what we were looking for. I think we were looking for a, a blender of some sort. And, uh, this guy had pink hunting socks. And they were really, really thick and really, really comfortable. So I bought a pack. Because Dad kind of dared me, you know. He's like, you'll never do it. You'll never wear them. I do every now and then. But only if I'm really, really cold and I can't find my others. 
I'm just not a pink person. Now, I like purple, but I like the deeper royal purple. You know, I like lavender as a flower, but it doesn't quite look as pastel-y when it's real than it does in a, you know, a can of paint. Okay, I've got two left. I put more on this side than I did that side. Hmm. Huh. Well, that's okay. I will do this. Put one right here. So I guess I did have enough. Well, pretty much anyway. And one right here. And then I had a friend who tried to make me all really girly and she tried to pick out my wardrobe and excuse me, I was thirsty. And that didn't quite go over so well. But I ended up with a pair of now gray and pink. I can wear gray and pink together. That's not that bad. As long as there's more gray than pink. So she convinced me. We went into Victoria's Secrets. And I bought a pair of boyfriend pants that were all gray. And then of course had pink on them. You know the Victoria's Secret pink. The word pink. And it was all sequined. But I sleep in those. I don't go out in public in them. And I think I went out of my way to find a pink sweater one time. I got found one at Macy's because it matched a dress that was given to me that I wore one Easter at church. I don't like my arms bare. I won't wear, you know, like tank tops without an overshirt or anything like that. Um, I just, I won't do that. And so, this dress was a sleeveless dress. It was very pretty. It was black and it had pink flowers on it. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I can wear that for Easter. But I was not going to wear it if I couldn't find a sweater that would go over my arms. So, I'm going to let that dry. And since I have a little bit of paint left over, I'm going to go ahead and add some to my butterfly. Just kind of here and there. Oh, I found out a new definition for the word uh, chaos. I thought it was pretty interesting that I'll share with you. Um, I didn't think I was going to like doing steampunk. Okay, because it, to me, it was just too industrial. It was too um, grungy. It was too uh, gritty. Okay. But I realized when I started this project that I actually really, really like it. Um, it wasn't chaos, you know. I discovered what the new definition for chaos is in the art community. And it's called layers. Yep. Layers. There's no such thing as chaos in the art world. It's layers. It's like, yay, I finally got that through my dickhead. So what do you guys think so far? Now those are just you know, the first step. I don't know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> well, I guess I could probably put them on the hat. But I'm wondering if I should use this around it as a band or use something else. Let me see, which side was I going to put that on? I think it was going to be right there. How does that look? 
Now, when I glue that down, I can use, let's see, I can try some mesh, some screen. Ooh, that would work. I think that looks good, but I don't like it that wide. So, let's, let's cut some, let's cut it in half so I'll have enough to go around the whole hat. Because the one piece I don't think is quite enough. So let's see. Hmm. I got something on it. Okay. Let's move my makeshift palette out of the way. And my scissors out of the way. And let's see how this will look. It doesn't even have to go all the way. I think that'll look pretty good. Well, let's see, what do you think? I think the goggles right there. So let's put this on. Make sure that that's where I want my goggles. Yeah. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this right here. And... I'm going to start hot gluing it down. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of glue on it because I'm pretty sure what I will put down will hold it pretty good. Come on, stay, stay, stay. There's a reason I'm not, you know, gluing all of it right at the moment because there's gonna things I'm gonna stick in the in the what do you call this thing that goes around the hat? The it's not the brim, it's it's like a hat band. You know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to leave it open in some parts so that I can do some tucks and some additions because goggles aren't quite oh yeah mm, let me see cut that corner off and no I won't get rid of these little corners I'm cutting off because they'll look really good on the corner of an ATC or something like a steampunk ATC let me see what have I got here okay like uh, that one. Here we go. Something like that one. You know? And I could glue that right there. Oh, that looks good. I think I'll just do that now while I'm at it. Because <laughs> I'm sure if I leave it somewhere, I'll forget what I was going to do with it. Let's see, where's the other one? Right here. See, anything. Anything goes. And it's all about flares. That's what's so cool about it. Oops. Let go. The flares in the blue, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You see that adds a little bit more. Not quite where you can see it a whole lot. But, you know, up close, you can see a little bit. And it gives it a little bit more of a steampunky look. So we'll tuck that off to the side. I know. All right, now, let me measure it going this way.
pulling off all the, sorry, if I'm out of frame, pulling off all the little blue strings I see. Okay, so then let's put this over here. I'll move that off to the side and pull this back over here so we can see. All right, so we're going to have it about right there. Okay, so then I'm going to leave this right under here. There we go. And I guess it was a good thing I left that space because it may not have reached all the way around. You see? Right here? But that's okay. I'll put something right here to cover that up if I have to. There we go. Then steampunk obviously is bungee. So it's okay. So we'll let that set for just a minute. And then we will put the goggles on. And I was thinking some peacock feathers. Ooh, that'd be cool. Okay, I've got some other feathers too I might pull out and add to it. Let's see. <sighs> I guess it doesn't really matter whether they're right side up or upside down, huh? As long as they are there. Okay. So let's see if I can do this really, really quickly without... Messing up too much. Ouch. So there we go. And I'm sorry, I think that is just fabulous. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, buddy. That's turning out awesome. Okay. Cut some extra glue in there. And I can see where it's not attached right here. So I'm going to add some there. But that's okay. And it is attached. Yay! Oh, I'm so happy. Hmm. What is that? I don't know. But, so what do you think so far, guys? Okay. So I'm going to pause this for a minute so I can get my other feathers. And I will be right back. Okay. These are actual duck feathers. My daughter-in-law, well, some of them. My daughter-in-law um, actually goes hunting, and she's good at it. Shoot, the morning of their wedding, she out, she she got herself a buck. The morning of the wedding, she was out hunting because it was it was deer season. And that's what it's like down here, you know. But to see the difference between what she was wearing when she was hunting and then what she was wearing when she walked down that aisle. Oh, my gorgeous son couldn't keep his eyes off of her. She was so beautiful. She's still beautiful. But I don't think I could have been any more proud of him than I was that day. 
standing there. And then I finally got to do the mother and son dance. And that was it for me. I was gone. You know? That was my baby boy. I had three girls and he was my youngest. And in fact, I have a picture of their wedding day right here. So I'm going to brag just a little. If you can see them. Yeah, that's her. That's Laura and my son, Stephen. And she went deer hunting that morning, or that morning and got herself a buck. So that was pretty cool. I don't remember what size it was. But it had some horns, antlers, whatever you call them. I'm not a hunter. I can fish, but I'm not a hunter. But yeah, that's how... That's how dedicated she is, but that's how she was raised. <clears throat> okay, now what side do we want to put these feathers in? Well, obviously, I know I'm going to have to trim them down. Should they go in the left side or the right side? What do you think? I know, not like you'll be able to answer me before I do the video, but... Okay. Here we go. The left side or the right side? Well, let's put together a little... What do you call it? I'm going to move this out just a little bit because I seem to be off camera some. Here we go. I apologize for that. Um, so let's see. If I was wearing it, I might want it on my left side. So that would be this side. If I can get it in there. I will have to cut it down now. So there. My fan keeps wanting to blow away my feathers. So let's tuck this in here and see how that goes. Whoops, it's backwards. I'll tuck that right there. And then we'll do another one. I've got three right next to it. Tuck it down the same hole if I can. There we go. And I'm going to leave this one a little bit taller. I can't get it in there. Ah, that's what she said. Ha ha ha. God, I hate that phrase. Uh oh. I think I cut it the same size. No, that's okay. Here we go. It doesn't look the same. And then this one. Now, let's see. Oh, yeah, that one's going to be cool. I'll turn this one facing forward. That one facing forward. And that one facing out. But I do have to cut that one down just a little. I got these uh, peacock feathers in uh, Happy Mail. I was so happy. I love peacocks. Um, well, I love their feathers, I'll tell you that. When I used to live in Hawaii, they were, they, they were running free all over the island. Um, we went for dinner one time at, uh, it was after I first got to Hawaii. We went to dinner at one of my husband's um, friends' houses that he was in the military with, and uh, was over in uh, Waianae, on the west side of the island. I believe that's the west side. I don't remember anymore because we used to live on the north shore. That's all I remember. Um, but 
No, stay there. We walked up, and there were peacocks everywhere. And I thought, oh my gosh, how awesome! Oh, and I, you know, I thought, well, gosh, you know, they're running free. Maybe they'll, you know, let you pet them or whatever. No, 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 no. They use peacocks for guard dogs. Like they do, some places use geese. Geese make really good guard dogs, if you didn't know that. Yeah, I knew that. I found that out the hard way, too. <laughs> but, yeah, they're used as guard dogs. And the racket they make. Oh, boy. You would think that uh, if God made something that beautiful, I mean, he had to have, I don't even know, he had to have run out of steam or something or forgot where he uh, left, the, left the voices because um, those things squawk. And when they squawked, they scared the holy living heck out of me. And I pretty much grabbed up my daughter and ran. I mean, right to the building. It just, it just, you know, I did not expect that. But I was 18 years old. I had a little girl. You know, I was so very naive when it came to all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> I'll put one of these right in the center. But yeah. Now I love their feathers though. Their feathers are beautiful. Oops. Let me pull this out just a little. So I can fit this one in here. There we go. Oops. But, yeah, so, if I'm pushing this off screen, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to get into where I can put these feathers. But you see now why I left, um parts of the the gray netting um, loose so I can do this so how does that look so far and I'm gonna put something right here I'm not sure what yet but <sighs> what, what was that Okay. I think maybe one more. But anyways, my my daughter in law also hunts she goes duck hunting. And I happened to be there at their house one time when she was plucking her ducks. <laughs> and I asked her if I could if I helped her pluck, could I keep some of the feathers? And she's like, oh, heck yeah, you can have them all if you want. So, there we go. There we go. How's that? Let's see if you can see that. Ouch. All right. Now, I'm still not sure what to put in front of it. I might... Huh. Okay, hold that thought. Okay, I've kind of decided what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Since it is steampunk. Oh, I just kind of fiddled with it a little bit and really hope this works. Because right now, all I'm going to do is just set the... Ouch. Barely set it on there. So if I have to, I can pull it off. And I can always touch up paint if I need to. Oh. 
Come on. There we go. This one right here. Ouch. Alrighty. And then, where's the one I was going to put up front? I think this is the one I was going to put up front. Okay, what is it? There we go. Have that now. That, that's what it was. It was just, ouch, stuck. Come on. Alrighty. What? So far, I kind of like it. But I'm not done layering, so I might totally change my mind and say, nope, don't like it, rip it right off. Oh, here's a different one. too far over. Alright, I like this so I'm going to start tacking it down. I'm not done, but I like where it's going. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Start tacking it down. Okay, I know what I need. That's what I should have been using. I can't find my other one. I think it's in my desk. But, whoops! That wasn't cool. Okay, so let's stay right there for a second. And it is. So. We will use the flat one. <sighs> Ugh. Here. Now these, I got these little rubber spatulas or silicone spatulas. You see some people and some are white and they say Santa's helper and all of that. I could never find anything like that. So what I did was I went to the Dollar Tree and they had a set of two on a ring. Whoops, that one fell. They had a set of two on a ring for a dollar. So I got them and they're perfect. No more burnt fingers, except half the time I forget to use them. So I burn my fingers anyway. And I'm not left handed, so it doesn't help. It does help a little. Okay. Now we're getting around to this side right here. And I'm going to put this down so I can use my right hand where my strength is. Push that down. My dinghy butt wasn't paying attention and I thought, well, you know, I'll just hold it with the glue gun. 
after I squirt the glue, right? Well, duh, it never set because the stupid tip of the glue gun is hot and it kept the glue melted. So I learned a really dirt to dirt moment right there. Okay. I'm going to ask this question, and it's probably one of those taboo things that you really shouldn't talk about. But I'm going to talk about it anyways because I have no, no, no shame. No shame in my game. Okay. How many crafters have gone to the bathroom or used to, tried to use the bathroom, right? And when they went to wipe, discovered there was glue all over their hands and the toilet paper was stuck to their hands. That happened to me one time. I could not stop laughing because I'm sitting here and I'm holding toilet paper and I'm doing this and this and this and nada. I had to reach over on the counter, get the hand sanitizer, wipe my hands down so I could use toilet paper to wipe with. Yeah, I was laughing so hard. I could not believe it. And if you have any embarrassing moments that you'd like to share, <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear them. Like I said, I have no shame. There's no shame in my game. But I never thought about it. I remember being aggravated that day because for some reason, for some single solitary stupid reason, the glue that I was using, actually, I think it was this one, the Tombow Multi Glue. Um, apparently, I didn't realize that the green one is repositionable. <laughs> so when it dries, it stays tacky. Well, it was doing the same thing to my hands. It was staying tacky. And I could not figure out, for the life of me, why there was so much daggum glue on my hands. Because I'm really, I'm not a messy crafter. The only time I get messy is when I pull out the jelly plate. And then I have some fun. Oh, somebody sent me this um, happy mail. There we go. Do I want the... Uh, it doesn't quite match, does it? It's not quite big enough, so let me check these out. Yes. Oh, here's one. That's loops. It's got a little bit of a tag on it. Let's see which ones of these might look better. Ah, I got these from eBay. Okay, not the A company. But from eBay. And I got... 20 of them. Now see, there's one with the hearts. What do you think? You think that one's okay? Let's see. Yeah. Let's do that. Then I think I got about 20 of these for about 5 bucks. And little brass vintage keys. I had bought a bunch a long time ago because my oldest daughter was gonna was getting remarried and she wanted a Alice in Wonderland theme. So I was gonna do the invitations like a little tag that says drink me or you know meet me for drinks or something. I don't I don't know. And I was gonna have a brass key tied to each invitation. And so I had was slowly over time building up my stash. And then she decided, nah, we're gonna do the we're gonna do a zombie theme. I'm like a zombie theme for your wedding. You want blood and guts everywhere. Oh yeah, it's what we like. I'm like, okay. Whatever. If that's your bailiwick, you're gonna have to have somebody else decorate because I'll help as much as I can but I'm not into the zombie thing 
I really want to put this behind something or something behind it or something to add to it. Maybe two keys. Okay, so let's pull let's pull these off and see what we see. Okay, there's two of them. Alright, so let's try this and see if we can't figure something out. Because it looks kind of plain just putting a key there. What do you think? So we're going to try... Ah. I'm just going to try and put it through the little one and then tie the other one to the big one, but you might not be able to see the hearts that way. Okay, there's one. And usually when I do keys, I always put a drop of or keys. When I do tags or anything and I add ribbons or ties, I'll put a drop of glue on on the the inner, I don't know what do you whatever you call it. To keep it, you know, secure. Okay. Oh, I remember what I was talking about. Okay, see? On the inside of that. Let me see if it will let you see that. Anyway, right there is where I usually put a drop of glue. What I was talking about was my favorite my favorite YouTubers. I remember now. Oh, good grief. <sighs> okay, so Stacy at Pink Puddle Crafts was my mentor. Is still my mentor. Her and I are still friends. I love her to death. Um... And then there was Lee over at Victorian Secrets by Lee. And who did I start watching next? I don't remember, but apparently they don't have a, a, a very big impression on me. Oh, nope, I do remember. Scrapbooking Made Simple. And, but she's all paper crafts, and that wasn't me. So, I mean, I got my, bi my big shot, and I was learning how to use it, and she has some great design ideas sometimes, and different ways you can use things. So I do watch her every so often. Um, she's the one that always coined the phrase, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And then after that was um, Emily... Uh, let's see, Creative Jewels by Emily, and then it was um, 70 Acre Studios, and I think, right, those are the ones that have given me the most inspiration so far. I'm sure there's more, but I can't think of any off the top of my head, and I'm a dingbat that way. I probably should have wrote it down, but I didn't. Okay, so let's see how these keys are going to... These are going to work. I don't even know if, they'll, if you'll be able to see them okay. I wonder if I should put a big black one right in the center of that. What do you think? No? Leave it colorful. I'm not leaving it as grungy as I normally would. Only because of some of the other content that's going to be um, utilized later on in the project. And there's a certain theme I'm going with. And. Okay, now there's something else I can put right there. And I really don't know what it is. Maybe. Maybe a, an ATC? No, it's too big. Oh, 
Ooh, I could probably put a twinge there. I wonder if I've got a uh, a twinge that's um, steampunky enough. I actually just very well might. Give me one second. There. Ah, there they are. Okay. Now, I'm sorry for my big fat head in the way. These are some of the, some I've been given. Okay, like these I've been given. This one I made. And um, here's some of the graphics I used. Um, this is my inchy twinchy box. Whoops. Obviously. Some of them have been you. I, I do. I love doing backgrounds. Okay, and um, I'm better at backgrounds than anything. See, this was all one piece of watercolor paper, and that design was inspired by ah, my next favorite, Teresa over at Cracked Heart Studios. This was her idea, or her design with the flowers, and I was trying to figure out a way to uh, to make. Um, I was trying to figure out a way to watercolor because I'm not very good at it. Now, see, this one is kind of steampunky, but I'd have to I'd have to work on the edges. So let's see. We'll put that in there. I'm going to leave these two out. That in there. This one we'll leave out. But I'm going to work with this one for a minute. And like I said, you don't expect to see... Um, oh, that stinker butt. <laughs> she put a man upside down. <laughs> My granddaughter was over um, back when we were practicing. And uh, she grabbed hold of my... Uh, my corner rounder, which is like one of my favorite things in my entire craft collection is one of my corner rounders. Well, the only one I have, but um, she grabbed it and these two plastic pieces fell out. Well, I haven't used it since then, so um, uh, I didn't realize when she put them back in there, she put them in upside down. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, okay, where's my bronze? No, uh, no that's not the one I want. No, not green. No, that'll work. Okay, this is, you do this with alcohol ink too, and I just discovered this not too long ago when I was trying to ink the edges of my words and stuff. You know, sometimes when you get the little words and you want, they're real small and it's really hard to hold them against your ink pad. So what I did was I just sprayed some in a clear plastic container and then I just dragged the edges through. Now this is just shimmer spray. So when it dries, it's just going to shimmer. But you see how you can get all of that and still make it look grungy. So I'm going to put a little bit more across the face of it. See that kind of toned that pink down a little bit, didn't it? There we go. Now obviously it's not going to be done yet. So, oh, you know what? I left, I got to show you guys something. Hold on, I left it out there with my dad. I'll be right back. Okay, this right here, this little baggie, there are 500 pieces. I haven't sat and counted them, but that's what I paid for. And right here it says 500 pieces. So there better be 500 pieces of metal steampunk gears and cogs and little arrows and things like that. Now this one cost me a little bit more than I would have rather paid, but it was twenty bucks. Um, yeah, it was nineteen ninety-five, and I had it in my wish list for a long time, and I finally just broke down and said, "Okay, 
since I'm working on the steampunk project, I'm going to go ahead and get them. So I did. But they are fabulous! Look at all of those. Those are so cool. And some of them are probably the same, which is fine. I don't know how many ways you can go different with the gear. Oh, let me see if there's something I can pour these into. Nope, I don't see anything. So we'll work with what we got. But yeah, I can see 500 pieces in here. Yeah, look at this. Let's see this one. And they got different colors. Ugh. That one's got a heart in it. That one, those two would look good together. So, let's just see what we see. Now, according to this, let's see, we can go. Oh, where did the heart one go? I just dropped it in there, didn't I? There it is. Let's see if that'll look alright. Now, if I could find a heart one that was maybe a different shade. That would be cool. And you'd think maybe. Here's one with two little screws on it. No, nope, that was the same shade. Wow, these are really cool. Nope, there's another heart, but it's the same shade. And here's a little copper one. There's a silver one, there's a gold one, and it looks like tarnished brass. Okay, um, yeah, I might use those, but the edges still aren't dark enough for me. So what I'm going to do is... That one back. That's green. That's eggplant. No, I want black. Where did the black go? There it is. Pitch black alcohol ink. Alrighty. So we'll see how that darkens it up a little bit. Put a little bit of blending solution in there. And let's use up what's left. I told you I don't waste anything if I can possibly help it. Okay, now those two. Let me put that back over there. Try and stick these all back in here. Leave that one out just in case. definitely going to have to find another container to put this in, but I think I've got one, but I'll worry about that in a little bit. I'd rather put it in something with a lid as opposed to a Ziploc baggie because these things can tear so easily. Mm. 
and these are metal these aren't plastic so I thought that 500 pieces for 20 bucks was a decent deal I couldn't find anything cheaper I make I probably oh now see there's a different color with the heart in it cool okay so let's put this one back because I wanted a different color heart let's see what we got Alrighty. Or let's see, let's do it on this side. Oh, there's glue strings everywhere, and I'm obviously. Should it right above the goggles? No, I don't think so. Let's do it on this side. We'll put a big gear behind it. Where's that big black one I had? Oh, it's not quite black. Where did the big one go? I didn't use it already, did I? Oh, here it is. Alright. So we'll put that on that side. I hope I want it. I want a color there. There we go. Okay. So let's push. Oops. Not those. Not those. Let's push this back. Bring this over. Oh. Set this in there. All right. It's a good thing these are paper or cardstock because they bend. I'd have a really hard time doing this. If they didn't, well, I apologize if I keep going off screen. Okay, see, so yeah, I glued that on there on the other side. Okay, put a little bit right on the top. glue that down okay so we'll set this aside for just a minute and decide what we're gonna do do we want to hang the keys from it or do I like the keys I like the keys so let's do the keys Wow, that heats up that metal quick. Alrighty. There we go. I don't think I'm going to do both of them. I think I'll just leave that one as just the one key. Maybe one gear. Down at the bottom or up at the top? I'll do it up at the top. There we go. How's that look? I hope it looks okay. Like I said, I'm winging this. I didn't do this beforehand. Like I made the top hat. <sighs> All I am doing is... Winging it. Seriously. I 
can show you. I'm being a very bad videographer today. And I apologize for that. There we go. Okay, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Because, like I said, I, I'm not real good at steampunk. I don't know the genre as well as, you know, some people do. And so everything I'm doing, I'm waking it. I might. I really want to do something over the top of the eyes, but no, I think that would be too much. Maybe we can put the other key over here. Nah. So what do you think, guys? What else do I need on this? I've got the goggles. I've got a key and some gears. Uh, I've got the feathers. I think I need to put a couple more gears on there. It's all about the layers, right? This is where I can probably put on the metal ones. Let's see. And that would kind of give it some 3D effect. tuck this one in here since it's what we were going to do anyway there we go now that kind of livened that up a little bit um, do we want to throw another one down yeah I do I want to throw another one down here so let's just do that Kind of bring it, bring it back some. No, I don't want another gold. I think I should put gears all over, all around the brim, the hat band. You think that would be? Ouch. Okay, or too much? Ouch. Ow. Okay, well this is what I've got so far. And it's not quite as decked out as I'd like. So I really think I need to put it down and do a little bit more research and see if there's something else I can add to this that will make it, you know, just wow. So on that note, I'm going to go. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Um, while I try to fool myself into thinking I know what I'm doing. Uh, if you like my videos, okay, please subscribe, click the thumbs up, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think I did good, what I could have done better, or if you have a suggestion, because no art is ever finished until it's finished. Uh, if you have a suggestion that would help me gear this towards uh, some more steampunky style, um, I'd be grateful. Uh, always keep the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. And always feel free to art yourself silly. We got to have some fun in life. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And then go check out my 500 subby uh, giveaway video. Um, I have a Facebook group. It's called Coffee Cup Crafts and Conversation. So, um, if you're interested in joining that, go over there and just request to join. Um, 
And this is me signing off. Uh, might be back on later. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to hit up uh, a pajama party tonight on YouTube. So if you want to join us, it'll probably be at Pink Poodle Craft um, YouTube channel. Uh, and if not, if she's not feeling good today, then um, I might head over to Cranky Crafters, uh, which is Epiphany Craft Studio. That's another one of my favorites. So if you want to join us, pop over, say hi, subscribe. You know the drill. Um, thank you so much and have a blessed weekend. Bye-bye.